Welcome to St. Clement's Episcopal Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. My name is Joy Kairos. I'm the rector at St. Clement's, and it is my pleasure to worship with you today, wherever you are, because in this time, we are a church scattered while still united as one body gathered together in Christ. Today is the third Sunday after the Pentecost, and I am so glad you are here with us. Let us begin our service with a moment of silence as we prepare to worship God in this space. This is God's table. All are welcome. All are needed. Our presence, our stories, our true selves are welcome here. We see each other with a grateful and open heart. Together, we are the body of Christ. In this time of physical distancing, we offer to you a truth. Every table is God's table. Every home is God's home. Every room and every doorway. As we gather and worship today, let us remember that we are in the presence of God, and it is God's presence that unites us as one body, no matter where we are, one body. As the candle is lit, take a moment to acknowledge God's presence wherever you are. God is welcome here. God is welcome. God is. God. Let us sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 537 in the hymnal 1982. Once again, that is hymn number 537. It will also appear on your screen. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow worn, whom Christ doth heal. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with fervent prayer, the wayward and the lost, by restless passions tossed, redeemed at countless cost from dark despair. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with one accord, with us the work to share, with us reproach to dare, with us the cross to bear, for Christ our Lord. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with joyful song, the newborn souls whose days reclaim from error's ways, inspired with hope and praise to Christ belong. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise today is God of the Universe. God of the Universe, mighty Creator, Maker of all things good, thank you for life. God, holy three in one, Spirit, Creator, Son, Breathe into us your love, breathe into us your love. Jesus, the saving one, born in a stable, born to be God with us, you are the light. God, holy three in one, spirit, Creator, Son, breathe into us your love, breathe into us your love. Spirit of God in us, bringer of comfort, teacher and loving guide, stay in our hearts. God, holy three in one, Spirit, Creator, Son, breathe into us your love, breathe into us your love. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First lesson. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we have to believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is portions of Psalm 69. We will read it responsively by whole verse. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. 
The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, Christ our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This week's gospel picks up where last week's left off. So to quickly recap, the disciples are being sent out to do Jesus's work of healing and proclamation. They have been instructed to use Jesus' name in the work of casting out demons, speaking the truth of God's inbreaking kingdom, and pronouncing peace. They've been instructed to enter villages and seek out people of power and influence. From these seats of power, the disciples are instructed to preach their message and perform their deeds of power for all of the people. But if those who inhabit these seats of power refuse to offer the disciples hospitality, the disciples are instructed to leave. Leave in search of places where the proclamation of God's vision for all creation might be better received. But what of those places the disciples leave behind? those places left behind to their own devices. What of them? What is to become of them? What is to become of those who refuse to hear? What is to become of those 
who refuse to respond? What is to become of those who refuse the offer of peace? What next? What now? In last week's passage, Jesus responds to this what's next by evoking the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, reminding the disciples that those who fail to care for strangers, those who fail to heed God's word, they are those whose empires will fall. They are those whose systems will be demolished by the very cruelty that they have embraced. You reap what you sow, he seems to say. And this is a cautionary tale, a cautionary tale indeed, but not just for long ago towns and villages, but for all of us who live in places where casual cruelty and contempt seem to be the defining qualities of the powers that be. Speak the truth to power. Speak the truth in love. Jesus's encouragement is an affliction to all those who would embrace the status quo, mistaking the status quo for the peace of Christ. Which brings us to this week. This week. This week when I read the gospel, I thought, can't a preacher catch a break? I've preached two hard sermons in a row, two afflicting, painful, and honest sermons. Come on, it's summer. Doesn't Jesus know it's summer in Minnesota? And we're supposed to be taking it easy, relaxing, letting go, and stepping back? Doesn't Jesus know how important it is to have time to go to the lake? Doesn't Jesus know that all we want to do right now is rest? Apparently, Jesus didn't get the memo. You know who else didn't get the memo? The powers of evil. The powers of evil did not get the memo about taking the summer off. And honestly, I'm really mad about it. Here we are in the midst of a beautiful June and we still have to deal with the powers of evil. A global pandemic, white supremacy, gun violence, poli police brutality, and systems, systems that continue to enrich some at the expense of our planet and its people. <sighs> Jesus versus the powers of evil. It's a summer blockbuster that honestly, I didn't want to watch. All I wanted was a break. And what I got was a broken world and breaking hearts. All I wanted was a break. Aren't we only supposed to talk about the hard stuff during Lent? And then Jesus makes it all better? Honestly, part of me wants to stamp my feet and shake my fists and cry out, no fair. But that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And if you think being a Christian is solely about beautiful music and aesthetically pleasing space, delicious snacks and poetic verse, you might want to skip ahead to the offertory hymn. You know, this is recorded. You could just skip ahead.
But for those who stayed, listen. The powers of evil have not taken the summer off. And we are called to live and work and breathe as Christ's body in the world. For those of you who've stayed, this is us versus the powers of evil. And it, it is a scary thing. It is a scary thing we are being asked to do and to commit ourselves to in these times. It's scary now, and it was scary then. Did you notice how Jesus tells the disciples, do not be afraid? Did you notice how Jesus tells them how precious they are to God? Did you notice how beloved you are? And beloved people, beloved people of God, far more precious to God than anything that can be imagined. You are being invited to disrupt the status quo, to stand up to injustice, and to do so even when it means we might lose people we love, even when it means we might hurt people we call our brethren in Christ, even if it means that some of our members skip ahead and skip right out the door. Do not think, Jesus says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. It is summer. And these are hard words. But before I go too much farther, some have used this passage as justification for physical violence and acts of aggression on the part of Christians. But before you get stuck there and make a mistake that is counter to the teachings of Christ, the only other place in which a physical sword is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew is when Jesus tells his disciples to put it away. When Jesus is arrested in the garden, a disciple draws a sword and strikes off the ear of a slave. And Jesus tells him, put the sword away. Because that is not the sword we are called to wield. This is a metaphorical sword, one that cuts and divides one from another. A metaphorical sword separating those who live in pursuit of Christ's mercy from those who would deny that mercy altogether. It is a sword of justice. It is a sword of righteousness. 
and our armor is peace. And in this gospel passage, the metaphor of the sword is a means of expressing the pain of separation, the pain that comes when we choose the cross instead of our convenience and complacency. Swords on a summer day, hard words in a hard time, a hard time is never convenient. And this is an inconvenient gospel for a summer day. But is there ever a convenient time to proclaim the triumph of love to those forces of evil that have sought to destroy us, both body and soul? Is there ever a convenient time So friends, we must not grow weary. It's summertime and it is time to act. Oh, and just in case you're wondering about the offertory, it's the Magnificat. So folks who skipped ahead got to hear Jesus's mother Mary speak defiant words about casting down the mighty, overthrowing rulers, and lifting up the poor and lowly in a prophetic articulation of her hopes for the future. Skipping ahead won't get you what you want either. It might, however, get us what God wants. Amen. And now let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, give us boldness, justice, and compassion as we offer our prayers responding, Lord, have mercy. Open our eyes to see the stranger in our midst offering hospitality and companionship, believing that the Holy Spirit visits us through those we do not know. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Reveal the fruits of suffering to all who are heavy laden with despair. 
that they may receive your endurance, grow in character, and live in hope. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Strengthen our hands and voices to proclaim the good news of Christ through the daily events of our lives and to those we encounter in the course of the day. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Increase vocations to the various ministries of our church, especially our religious communities, whose members hold the church, her mission and peoples, in prayer and who work for the joy of the gospel. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Bless our nation, our elected officials, and all advocates for reform and change. Give them wisdom in their deliberations, that legislation, programs, and reforms may serve the best interests of the common good and the needs of the global community. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Hold in your arms of mercy those who are ill and grant to those who have died a room prepared by your own hands. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. At this time, we offer our own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Today in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those whose last names began with the letters P through R. Ken, Sue, Ulrich, Jessica, Matthias, Pat, Virginia, Kathy, Tim, Jessica, Colin, CJ, Henry, Calvin, Kay, Shirlene, Richard, Gretchen, Elliot, Abe, John, Jerry, Stephanie, Krista, Juliana, Larry, Judy, Sandra, Bert, Sally, and Hemp. We also pray for Molly Weiss, who is on, in very short order, going to be ordained to the priesthood and all other ordinance. We bid your prayers as well for Mary Fred and her family. And we pray for all those who are doing the hard work that God has given them to do. Please share with one another your prayers. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now gathering our prayers and praise into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and one another. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to share Christ's peace by taking a moment to text someone in your community or make a note of someone whom you will call or write after today's service. And now, walk in love as Christ loves all of us.
And now, during this time in which we cannot gather to celebrate the great sacrament of Holy Communion, let us unite our hearts and voices in this prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O oh Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may ever be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you, and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come on. Amen. God bless you and keep you this day and always, secure in the knowledge and love of God. Amen. Amen. And now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in Christ's presence as Christ goes with you always. Amen. What a privilege and pleasure to share this time with you. A few notes about um, the service and services to come. First of all, I want to thank Bob Gopal, who represented the entire congregation as the voice of the people. Peter Harkisellers, who is our lector today. Chelsea Stanton and Jeb Rock, who led our prayers. Ben Dulak, our cantor, and Mark Stahura, our Zoom verger. And since many of you will ask me, the waving grains and grasses in front of St. Clement's are actually across the street. And a photo was taken through the grass, because um, I know a few of you will ask. And now speaking of St. Clement's and what is in front of it, very soon we will be able to gather for worship in front of St. Clement's. Beginning in July, we'll be offering a variety of worship offerings outside on the green. Um, as of today, we have heard that permission is going to be given for these outside gatherings. So please stay tuned for the details to come. Next week, you'll have the opportunity to hear Mark Stahura, our formation director. Not sorry, Mark might be confused because that's not his job. Mark Stahura, our music director. Um, you'll have the opportunity to hear Mark preach. So um, please take note of that. And wherever you are, please know you are being held in prayer. Now, don't forget to blow out any candles you've lit and know that no matter how much we might try to dim the light of Christ, that light's going to keep on shining. I'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>